Hi everyone, this is Cooking with Kurt. Today my husband Donald and I are going to show you how to make a rainbow layer cake with chocolate frosting. June is officially Pride Month and we've been wanting to make a Pride rainbow cake for years. Surprise! We're gay! And married! Don't look so disappointed ladies! <laughs> <laughs> this recipe was requested by Ji Chen Wu. Thanks so much for your requests, and we hope you like this video. To make cake layers with the vibrant rainbow colors, we're going to make a white cream cake similar to the one we made for the caramel coffee crunch cake a while back. To start, let 24 tablespoons or 3 sticks of unsalted butter, 9 large egg whites, and 1 and 3 fourth cups of buttermilk come completely to room temperature. We won't be adding any egg yolks to achieve this white cake batter so that when the colors are added, they really pop. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, then take two 9-inch round cake pans. Butter the sides and bottoms of the pans and line the bottom with parchment paper. Prep four additional rounds of parchment paper as a total of six 9-inch rounds of parchment paper will be needed. This rainbow layer cake has six colors, but we only have two pans. <laughs> Living in New York City, we don't have that kind of storage space. Exactly. So we're going to make do with our two pans and just baking the six colors in three batches. Take a medium sized mixing bowl, add in the one and three fourth cups of room temperature buttermilk, three fourth cup of vegetable oil, and one tablespoon of clear vanilla extract. Whisk this together to combine and set this aside. Again, we're using clear vanilla extract to make the cake layers as white as possible, but you can use regular vanilla extract if clear vanilla extract is not available. Then take a large mixing bowl and a sieve. Add in four and a half cups of cake flour, one and a half tablespoons of baking powder, three fourth teaspoon of baking soda, and one teaspoon of salt. Sift them in and whisk them together to combine and set aside. In the bowl of your stand mixer, add in the 24 tablespoons of room temperature butter. With a paddle attachment, mix on medium-high speed until the butter is smooth. While continuing to mix on medium-high speed, slowly add in 2 and 2 third cups of granulated sugar. Once all the sugar has been added, continue whipping on medium-high speed for 5 minutes until the mixture looks light and fluffy. Turn the speed down to medium-low and add in the 9 room temperature egg whites one third at a time. It's very important that the egg whites are at room temperature and wait for the added egg white to get fully incorporated before adding more. When the egg whites are fully incorporated, stop the mixer and scrape down the bowl. Then continue to mix on medium-low. Add in one-third of the dry ingredients and mix until fully incorporated. Then add in one-third of the wet ingredients and mix until fully incorporated. Continue alternating between dry and wet ingredients one-third at a time till everything has been added. Mix until just combined. Scrape down the paddle attachment and mixing bowl as needed. Divide this batter into six different bowls. Mix the food coloring into each bowl of the six bowls with the following amounts of coloring. Half a teaspoon of Americolor Gel Regal Purple. Half a teaspoon of Americolor Gel Royal Blue. Half a teaspoon of Americolor Gel Leaf Green. Half a teaspoon of Americolor Gel Electric Yellow. Half a teaspoon of Americolor Gel Orange and half a teaspoon of Americolor Gel Super Red. Mix these colors in so that each bowl of colored batter is a nice uniform color. As we mentioned earlier, we'll be baking these six colors in three batches of two. Pour the first two colors into the two prepared pans, spreading the batter evenly into the pan with a small spoon. We're going to bake this in our preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean and the sides of the cake start to pull away from the sides of the pan. Let them cool in the pans for 5 minutes on a metal rack. Then carefully invert the cakes onto metal racks, lift off the pans, 
Peel off the parchment paper the cakes were baked with, and let the cakes finish cooling to room temperature on the metal rack. Repeat these steps with the other two batches, i.e. the remaining four colors. Wipe off the pans with a paper towel. There's no need to wash them. Prep them again by lightly buttering the sides and bottoms of the pans, and line the bottoms with parchment paper, and pour the batter in. Each batch will bake for 15 minutes. Like before, check for doneness, let them cool in the pans for 5 minutes, carefully invert the cakes onto metal racks, lift off the pans, peel off the parchment paper, and let the cakes finish cooling to room temperature on the metal rack. The next component of this cake is the chocolate ganache frosting. Take one pound of very high quality bittersweet or semi-sweet chocolate and grate it into a large bowl. Then take a medium sized saucepan, add in one and two third cups of heavy cream, one fourth cup of granulated sugar, and one fourth cup of corn syrup. Bring this to a gentle simmer on low medium heat while mixing till the sugar dissolves. As soon as it starts to bubble at the sides, Remove it from the heat. The corn syrup will give the frosting a nice shiny finish. If corn syrup isn't available, you can substitute it with 1 4 cup of additional granulated sugar. Add in the 1 pound of grated bittersweet chocolate and stir to melt it in. Add in 6 tablespoons of unsalted butter that's been cut into pieces, 2 teaspoons of vanilla extract, and 1 4 teaspoon of kosher salt and stir this into the mixture till it's smooth. Place the saucepan over a big bowl of ice water and continue stirring with a spoon, making sure to scrape the bottom and sides as you stir till it cools and becomes a nice spreadable consistency. This should take about three to five minutes of stirring in the ice bath. It should not be too cool that it's stiff and hard to work with, but not too warm that it's runny. If it gets too cold and stiff, just let it sit at room temperature to warm up till it becomes spreadable again. When the chocolate frosting reaches a spreadable consistency, we're ready to assemble the cake. Take a cake board that's larger than 9 inches in diameter, this is a 10 inch diameter cake board, and place it on a revolving cake stand. Place the purple layer on it. Frost a very thin layer of chocolate frosting, about 1 8 inch thick layer of frosting, or about one third cup worth of frosting, making it as smooth and even as possible. Place the blue layer on top of it. Now we know one third cup of frosting for a layer seems like very little and the layers look very thin, but remember, there will be six layers of chocolate frosting including the top of the cake, so keeping the middle layers thin is important because if you don't, you'll run out of frosting. It'll be a chocolate overload, like in Matilda. Chocolate ganache frosting is rich and delicious, but six layers of it is no joke. Repeat the process of adding a very thin layer of chocolate frosting, about a 1 8 inch thick layer of frosting, or about 1 3rd cup worth of frosting, alternating with layers of cake. After purple and blue, add the layers of cake in the following order. Green, yellow, orange, and then red on top. Use the remaining chocolate frosting to cover the sides and top of the cake. I use a bench scraper to smoothen out the sides and an offset spatula to smoothen out the top as much as possible. This chocolate ganache is rich and a thin layer of frosting on the outside is enough to result in a moist and flavorful cake. Clean off any excess frosting from the base. For additional decoration, we like to press rainbow sprinkles around the bottom edge of the cake. Prepare short strips of parchment paper that are about 2 inches wide and 6 inches long. Spray just a little bit of vegetable oil spray onto the strips. Then add rainbow sprinkles on top of the oiled surface. One strip at a time, pick up the strip of parchment paper and quickly press the strip onto the chocolate frosting on the sides of the cake. Gently flick the parchment paper so the sprinkles stick to the chocolate, then carefully peel away the parchment paper. Do this around the entire circumference of the cake. Then clean off any excess sprinkles from the base of the cake. 
to finish it off, we're adding just a little bit of rainbow sprinkles on top of the cake as well to add a pop of color. Keep your cake in the fridge if you're not serving it the same day, but we recommend taking it out of the fridge about three hours before serving, allowing it to come to room temperature and letting the chocolate ganache soften. And there it is, our beautiful pride rainbow layer cake with chocolate frosting and rainbow sprinkles. Ansara. Mmm, yum. So good. The frosting is so rich and chocolatey. And the rainbow colors in the cake and sprinkles just make this so magical. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching. Please let us know in the comment section below if you're planning to make this rainbow layer cake. Send us pictures of your creations on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Links below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Cooking with Kurt. And don't forget to click on the bell so you get notified when we post new cooking videos. And for our written recipes, be sure to check out cookingwithkurt.com. Marami salamat and happy, happy pride! pride.